everyone. Welcome again. Hi, Mrs. Kogan. And now when we're there and, 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 and friends come in, they say, hi, everyone. Hi. But it's so nice to hear their name. So as Robert walks in, I did some painting this week. As Robert walks in, what do we say? Hi, Robert. Hi, Mark. Hi, Giambella. Hi, Neela. Hi, Connor. Okay. We're going to start with a prayer. The Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy, crossed over, back to the original shoulder, Spirit, <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Bow your heads. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dear Holy Spirit, open our hearts to hear what you want us to hear and to give what you want Mrs. Kogan to share. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. I want to show you your your uh, plants every now I, I cut five uh you know plantings when we first started class now if we were in class you'd have them all in individual base individual vases but here we are but i want you to see roots now roots are what's growing inside of us without anybody realizing how much we're growing look at that little root and then everybody else sees our leaves. So by the end of first grade, it's going to be fun to see how much we've grown interiorly and see how much we've, we've shown people how much we've grown. It's obvious to them. And how is, our, how is our immediate obedience coming along? Obedience is so important, boys and girls. It makes your life so much happier, so much better, so much honest, uh, so, so much more honest. Okay, so I showed you the first week some cotton balls. When somebody, when you do something immediately, and your mom, your grandmother, maybe some, maybe a teacher in school said, "Oh my golly, thank you so much for for doing this immediately." You can come home and tell your parents about that, and they'll say, "Well, go get a cotton ball." So even if it's outside the home, and then you collect your cotton balls. So let's see how they go. It's not, not only obedience, boys and girls. But immediate obedience, that's really important. Okay, we have our three-ring binder. We have our fourth. This is our fourth session. We have our fourth uh, mystery, the fourth decade of the joyful mystery. And do you know what it says? Read along with me. Jesus is presented in the temple. That's why it's called the presentation. Jesus is presented in the temple. So who do we have here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We have Joseph. We have Mary. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. How many days ago? About eight days ago. The firstborn son is presented to the temple, Jewish religion, eight days after, after the baby's born. Joseph has two little turtle doves here. It's like a sacrifice. And the rabbi the Jewish rabbi is going to bless the baby. Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to the temple. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending us Jesus, our Savior. Let's read that again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending us Jesus, our Savior. How many years ago was this? About 2020. We're in 2000, the year 2020 of our Lord, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. Okay, I took it upon myself again this week to color my sheet. I want you to have beautiful colored sheets, boys and girls. I used acrylic paint. This is all acrylic paint. And then, what did I put up here? Anybody know? I put halos. 
I put halos above St. Joseph, our Blessed Mother, and Jesus, because that shows their holiness. The rabbi didn't see their halos. We don't see halos around present-day saints, around ourselves, but this is what we're striving for, boys and girls, to have that halo around our head. Illustrators love to paint halos. They're pointing out the holiness of the person, and the holiness comes from not what they do externally, although that's, that's an outreach of our, our innards, but it's what comes from inside. And it's mainly love. We, we talked about love last week. It's mainly love. Love of God, love of ourselves, love of neighbor, and love of ourselves. Now, here's a picture. Here's a picture of our Blessed Mother holding Jesus. And here's the rabbi. So this says, when Jesus was eight days old, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple. Jewish law said, because jo Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family, they were Jewish. Uh, took the temple. Jewish law said that he was to be presented to God because because he was their firstborn son. Now, there was a pious old man named Simeon in the temple. Can you say Simeon? Look what I did here this week. I made Simeon. Simeon immediately recognized Jesus as the Messiah. He took the adorable child Jesus in his arms, thanking God for allowing him to see his savior before he died. God promised, is that word again, promised, Simeon that he would see the Messiah before he died. There was another woman in the temple also. Now here's, here's Joseph, here's Mary with the baby, here's Simeon again, here's Simeon. Do you know who this person is? Her name, her name is Anna. Anna was very old. She was widowed for many years, meaning her husband died many, many years ago. And she would just spend her days and days at the temple uh, praying and sacrificing. So here she is in the picture. And she also... Let me see what this book says. Simeon hopes, holds Jesus and gives thanks to God. You still see Anna there? Now Simeon's holding Jesus. The next page, Simeon warns Mary about the joy and the suffering ahead. So he knew that Mary, as Jesus' mother, would have many joys, but he also warned her. Here's Mary. I mean, he also warned her that she would have many sufferings. And But the God had sent Joseph to be a protector of both Jesus and Mary. And the next page says... The prophetess, Anna, sees Jesus and praises God. So she also knows, even without Simeon having been there, she also knew that this was a very, very special baby. Very, very special. So we always think, when we think of the presentation, we think of Mary and Joseph, of course. Here's Mary. And I have made Joseph this week. And he's holding Jesus. My little Caroline. We made Jesus, and then she sewed this on. I used glue, but I, 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 I use a lot of sewing, and Caroline sewed this on. And Simon and Anna for the presentation. Those are the four important people at the presentation. And I also made the rabbi. That was fun. Now, the rabbi didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus was another baby. Another Jewish boy coming forth. And he he did what, you know, he blessed the baby and was very pleased to do so. But he did not realize what Simeon and Anna realized. How do you think they, who told them? How do you think they knew? I think it's the Holy Spirit again. The Holy Spirit. So these are fun. Boys and girls, I, I have a whole bunch of these. Look at them. So I'm going to, I'm getting things ready to pass on to you when we have our, our um, drive through for your next group of weeklies. But I'm going to give each of you a couple of these. I got them first in Michael's, and then they didn't have that many of them, so I had to order them through Amazon. But I'm going to give each of you a couple of these, and you can make yourself, you can make Jesus in yourself, 
You can make yourself and a friend. You can make mom and dad. You can do anything. You can make some of the Old Testament. I made the Old New Testament, boys and girls. I'm making the New Testament. It's fun. But I want, you may want to make the Old Testament figures. We have Noah. This week we're going to have Abraham. They would be fun to make. Now we're, we're moving along. And now we're on our promise. So get out your weekly. This is a particularly interesting weekly. Okay. Neela, you have your weekly there? What do you see? You tell us. What what do you who do you see here? You know who you see? Saint Francis. He was rich. His family was rich. But he gave away his money to help poor people. Now, so many saints have a counterpart. They have another person who was very saintly at the same time, and they were friends. Here, now you're going to cut this out. Now, I cut this down in the middle. And when you turn over, now you fold on the dotted lines. What do you do? You fold on the dotted lines, but you cut. You cut on the straight lines. So I fold it and I cut. So now what we're able to do is... This week's theme is Jesus leads us to happiness. We follow Jesus. He leads us to happiness. So I'm going to fold over St. Francis. And who do we have here? Let's all read together. You're going to have to just turn your sheet over at this point. St. Clair wanted to help poor people too. She spent her life praying to God. She spent her life praying to God. Here's a picture of St. Uh, Clair, St. Clair of Assisi, C-L-A-R-E of Assisi. My daughter, Anne, took St. Clair as her confirmation name years ago. She studied all the saints, and she took she took Clair as her confirmation name. Clair started the um, Poor Clairs. It's, a, it's, a, it's along with the Franciscans, see the brown robe, the, the uh, order, was called the Poor Clares. And at one point, there were soldiers coming, and they were going to sack the monastery. They were way, way back when. And Saint, they were, the, the nuns were very frightened. And St. Clair Van, she got the monstrance with a host in it. This is the host of Jesus, the body and blood, soul, and divinity, the sacred host, the Holy Eucharist of Jesus, and put it in a carrier case, like a mon monstrance. And she held this up. That's all she did. And do you know what happened? All the um, invaders turned around and ran away. It's great power, boys and girls, great power. So we know St. Clair is being a good friend to St. Francis and also for what happened, how she saved her monastery from invaders back in the 12th century, 12, 1200s. Now, another one we come along is it now the second one. Now, let me see now. Mark, do you ever see a priest like this? His hat, we know him by his hat. He lived out in Hawaii. He's in Belgium, but he lived out in Hawaii. Molokai, Hawaii, one of the Hawaiian islands, Molokai. And he's helping children, isn't he? He's helping people. Some of them don't look too well at all, do they? They're called lepers. So we have St. Damien. Can you all say St. Damien? My nephew, my brother, and his, my sister-in-law, they named their one of their sons. He, they gave Damien his middle name. He's Michael Damien. So my nephew has a great devotion to St. Damien. We were out in Hawaii about, uh, I was with my husband and my son maybe about 10 years ago now. And my son and I, my husband really wasn't up to it, but my son, my son and I, we were in Honolulu. We took a flight over to Molokai for the day. It's one of the islands, not that far away. And and um, the, the little plane came in. We spent the whole day. Some people were on our plane. Others came down from, from way up high in Molokai. They came down by mule or they came down by, by foot. We had a whole whole day in that one part of the island is very excluded because of the high cliffs. Nobody can really get off that area once they get on it. That's where they 
That's where the lepers were. Lepers were in Jesus' day, too. When did, um, he was born in 1840. It's not that long ago that St. Damien was born. So we hear lepers in Jesus' day. We also have lepers in the 1840s. Hansen's disease is called today. We still have leprosy, but they have, it's called Hansen's disease, but they, they have a cure. They have medication for it today. But in those days, they didn't have that. And St. Damien gave his whole life. He gave his whole life to helping the lepers. And you know what happened? He caught leprosy himself. I'm going to turn the page. You know, it says, St. Damien went to Hawaii to be a parish priest. He went to the island where very sick people lived, and he cared for them. Now we're going to turn the page. And here again, now we have another nun. St. Mary Ann came from New York. She came from Syracuse, New York. She was part of the Franciscans. So this goes back to St. Francis. And she came to help. Sister Mary Ann Cope, she um, became a saint. So she's St. Mary Ann Cope, C-O-P-E now. But she's, she, she's remembered for what she did, for what she did with Father Damien on the island of Molokai. And down below here, St. Perpetua, now she would go way, way back to the early church. St. Perpetua was a young wife and mother. The Romans killed her because she believed in Jesus. For the first 300 years, boys and girls, there was so much persecution in the church. And St. Perpetua was one of them. We always hear St. Perpetua linked with St. Felicity. But I really didn't know their connection until our weekly here. And it says St. Felicity was a perpetual servant. She died with her. So they were very devoted to each other. Very, very devoted. And Felicity would have taken the faith, the Christian faith, of Perpetua. And they were both persecuted. Here's a Roman, here's a Roman soldier. All right, let me see what we have here. We have in church, look around the church and find a picture, stained glass, a picture, stained glass windows, or station, or statue of a saint. Find out which saint it is. So in St. Joseph on the Brandywine, we're going to see what statues they have. And the stained glass windows are a story in itself. Wonderful windows. We'll talk more about them, and I'll take pictures of them, boys and girls, for you. But when you're in church, you look at those windows. Question of the week. Which beatitude would you like to work on and why? Did you ever hear that word, beatitude? I have a book that says <clears throat> the beatitudes. Connor, how many beatitudes are there? Do you see? You're right. Eight beatitudes. <clears throat> we have Jesus giving these beatitudes. <clears throat> I'm going to just go quickly. The first beatitude is Jesus gives us grace. I receive your grace when I pray because I am united by you with love. So we want to pray, boys and girls. <clears throat> One of the beatitudes. Jesus wants us to be sorry. Jesus wants us to be sorry when we do something that we shouldn't have done. He, want, he wants us to feel it in our heart and he wants us to express it. <clears throat> Jesus wants us to obey. There we go again. When I obey, I shall be happy because I shall be like you. Did Jesus obey? Yes, he did. Jesus wants us to be holy. Jesus wants us to have those halos around our heads. The fifth one, I think this is, Jesus wants to show me mercy. That's a beautiful word, boys and girls, mercy. You'll hear it. You'll hear it a lot. You have shown your mercy to me by forgiving my sins. This is talking to Jesus. Jesus forgives us our sins. Help me to be merciful to others and to forgive them when they hurt me. So merciful sounds like it has something to do with forgiveness and love and compassion and understanding. The sixth, Jesus wants me to be good. You hear that. You hear that, don't you, a lot? You'll hear, Robert, be good. All of us to be good. No matter what age we are, we have to be good. Jesus wants me to seek peace. Jesus can give us peace in our hearts, boys and girls, no matter what's going on around us, no matter what sorrow we may be experiencing. We want the peace of Jesus. You'll hear that in the Mass. Peace be with you. That's the peace of Jesus. 
And Jesus asks us to live for him. Keep our eye on heaven. Keep our eye on the Holy Spirit. Don't just depend on what's going on around you. Inside yourself, you know you have the love of God. You know our life here is so important. It's not going to end with this life. Oh, and it's going to be, we're going to hopefully be with all of us in heaven. I always pray for all my students. I've always done this down through the years that any student I ever taught will be in heaven, will be in heaven, that we'll all be in heaven together. You won't miss a single one of them. We have an Our Father. Now, now this is on your last sheet. You're going to cut out that last sheet, so you have to get your scissors out this week. And and uh, I, used a, uh, I used a stapler. I, I have a stapler, but you can use glue, too. But it's nice to put them together. Our Father. So this is our prayer, Our Father. Hold that, boys and girls, and we'll, we'll read this at the very end. This will be our closing prayer. Then I want you to open up. It says in our uh, weekly to open up to page 34. Saints pray for us. You know where they pray for us? They pray for us from heaven. Saints pray for us, pray for us from heaven. So you're going to read this. What's, what letters do you see? You're going to cross off, however you do it with paint, magic markers, and you're going to see what word you find in here, and you're going to spell that word right here. We have inside our little church. Here we are. We're moving along, boys and girls. I have 21 minutes, so we're going to have to be quick. Um, now, I'm going to open up, rather than reviewing what we had last week, let's go right to this week. Okay, this is this is on one side of the altar. Let me see. We, if you come in the door, this looks like maybe it's a side door, but there's a holy water font. There's usually holy, holy water fonts at every door entering a church. We dip our fingers in. We make the sign of the cross. If any water goes on the floor, that's okay. It's like a baptism of water. You pray for the souls in purgatory. You bless yourself, and you come into church. We have statues. I talked about look for the statue. We have a statue of our, a beautiful statue of our Blessed Mother in St. Joseph's. Do you know what these are? Let's see how close I can get them for you. See those Roman numerals? It goes one, two, seven. On the other side of the church will be eight to fourteen. Those are called the Stations of the Cross. They're in every Catholic church. We pray the Stations of the Cross, boys and girls. We pray them by walking. We pray them by moving. We go from one station to the next. These are 14 scenes in the in events in the life of Christ when he was carrying his cross. They're called the Stations of the Cross. The station, we go from one to the next, and we pray to Jesus. We pray for what Jesus did for us. Um, so we have the seven stations of the cross, and usually they're in Roman numerals. We'll talk more about Roman numerals if you're not familiar with them. Here we have votive candles. We have candles in St. Joseph's. You'll see people going up, lighting a candle. They're lighting a candle for their loved one, a special intention. Um, just beautiful to, to see the candles all burning. And know they're all for special intentions. Okay. Our saint of the week is going to be Saint Damien again. It's going to be Saint Damien. Giabella, can you say Saint Damien? Saint Damien. And we'll have a big picture. If we get back this year, if not, I'm going to bring you into my classroom next year. And this is a picture of Saint Damien. We'll have all these up in class. Here's the leopard children. His flowers usually represent uh, a particular saint, but he was in Hawaii. Very pretty flowers. But he was very isolated, boys and girls. He had to make he had to make his own buildings. When I was there, the church is called Saint Philomena. That's another very important saint. Saint Philomena Church, and we see where he lived. We see where Sister uh, Saint Marianne Cope lived. She had a school for girls. Father Damien had a school for boys. But he was he was involved with all the families. Um, what else did I want to say about? Uh, oh, and he's buried there, boys and girls. We saw his tomb. He's buried in Molokai. So a saint for the day is St. Damien. And here we have, he's one of our modern saints. Can you pick out St. Damien? Can you see him? Right here? See the hat? He's always going to look for black. He's going to look for a hat. He's holding the crucifix. He wears glasses. And inside we have a little, we have a picture of St. Damien, two of the leopard children. And we're going to read this little bit. St. Damien of Molokai, that's how you spell Molokai, the island of Molokai. St. Damien from Belgium sailed across the seas to serve and help Hawaiians 
with a serious disease. He dressed the wounds of people whom others feared to touch, because that's how that's transmitted leprosy, touching somebody else. Built schools and homes, that's why you saw him building, and told them, Jesus loves you very much. His main mission was to bring Jesus to the lepers and to take care of them. They needed care. They needed tremendous care. Okay. And our Bible story is of Old Testament. We're up to Abraham. We're up to Abraham. Can you all say Abraham? He's called the father. It, it, our, our, our whole faith started with the Jewish faith. The, the Jewish people call Father, Father Abraham. And we call Father, Father Abraham too because we're an extension of the Jewish faith. With Jesus coming. One night Abraham sat, sat under the twinkling stars. Can you count the stars, asked God? One day you will have many, many children. More than all the stars in the sky. Abraham was very puzzled. He had no children at all. And he and Sarah were getting very old. But one day he and his wife, Sarah, did have a little boy. And you know what they called him? Isaac. You know, you're hearing boys and girls. You hear birds in the background? There you go. I have I have Isaac over there. I have Isaac and I have Joseph. And we just got a little, we just got a little, kind of, we just got a little girl yesterday and I named her Magdalena. So they're canaries. They're canaries. But you're hearing Isaac sing right now. He's probably hearing us talking about his namesake, Isaac. Much later, just as God has said, there were a great many families descended from Abraham living on the earth, more than all the stars in the sky. So a Isaac was his only son, but we're all descended from Isaac. And our story in the New Testament is the presentation. So here's a picture. Now you can tell us more about it. Why Joseph and Mary had to go to the temple. Um, why they had to have the blessing of the, the rabbi. Joseph, do you have, see two little doves there? Maybe. It, oh, no, Mary's carrying them in their little cage. Mary's carrying the doves. And this is the presentation in the temple. Okay. So there we go. And we are 27 minutes. We want to be below 30. So let's get out of Our Father. Where did I put Our Father? Here we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is what it's going to look like, boys and girls, when you have it all set. So let's read together. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Remember, hallowed means holy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See what brings us happiness? Obedience, love, consideration, forgiveness. Give us this day our daily bread. That's why we always pray grace before meals. We thank God for all the wonderful food he provides for us. And then at Mass, the Holy Eucharist, that'll be next year. And forgive us our trespasses. That's when we do things we shouldn't do, boys and girls. We're asking God to forgive us. We're asking the person that we have offended to forgive us. As we forgive those who trespass against us, if somebody says to you, I'm sorry, what do you have to say? But you can't just say it. You have to feel it. You have to feel it. I forgive you. It has to come from within, boys. It can't just be, I, I forgive you. No, no, no. You show it with your whole being that you forgive them and you do forgive them. And then, and lead us not into temptation. Remember, temptation isn't a sin. Eve was tempted to take that fruit from the tree, but she didn't commit a sin until she actually took a bite from it. So we may be tempted to do something, but we have to be strong in little things. We have to say no. No, no, no. I'm not going to do that. And then that'll help us say no to big things later on in life. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Amen means I agree. Okay, boys and girls, this was great. Another week. Okay. Have a good week. Be kind, be good, and be prayerful. Bye-bye.